ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد Brothers and sisters, every body part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in the human being has a particular function that is specific to it. And every day that we wake up, there is sadaqah, charity due upon every single faculty that we have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the authentic hadith collected in Sahih al-Bukhari. On the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an Bukhara, qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullu salama, ya'ni kullu a'adha, من الناس عليه الصدقة كل يوم تطلب فيه الشمس. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that every body part, every time the sun rises, every time the sun rises, there's a charity صدقة that is due on every single bone in our body. But there's one particular joint, one particular faculty or body part that is particular in particular. That literally jeopardizes the safety and security of all of the other body parts. As a matter of fact, every morning that we wake up, every body part that we have seeks refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this one particular body part so that it does not subject us to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in an authentic hadith collected in the Sunnah of Al-Tirmidhi on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala al-Bukhara. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان وتقول اتق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإن اعوجت اعوجتنا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that every morning the child of Adam wakes up, all of the body parts تكفر اللسان defer to the tongue and say to the tongue اتق الله فينا. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning us. For indeed we are a part of you. Meaning the rest of the body is talking to the tongue. Saying that you do not function independently of us. You are a part of us. And if you are upright, then the rest of us, the rest of the body will be upright. But if you are crooked, then the rest of the body will be crooked. <coughs> the tongue, brothers and sisters, is directly related to the iman, the faith of the believer. And until we gain control over our tongue, we will not gain control over our iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in an authentic hadith that was collected in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. Qala in the view sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yastaqimu iman abdin hatta yastaqima qalbu wa la yastaqima qalbuhu hatta yastaqimu lisana. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the iman of the believer, the faith of the believer will not be steadfast, will not be firm will not be solid until uh, his tongue is solid. That the iman of the believer will not be steadfast until his heart is steadfast and his heart will not be steadfast until his tongue is steadfast. And this is the only body part, brothers and sisters, that requires restraint the way that it does. As Abdullah ibn Mas'ul radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, ma shay'un ahwaju ila tool al-sijjan min al-lisan. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said there's nothing on the body that deserves a long stint in prison except the tongue. There's no body part that deserves to be put in prison except the tongue. Rather the tongue, brothers and sisters, 
is the main thing that lands most people into the hellfire. لما سئل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أكثر ما يدخل الناس الجنة فقال تقوى الله وحسن خلق وسئل عن أكثر ما يدخل الناس النار فقال الفم والفرج رواه الترمذي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked what is the thing that causes most people to enter into the into paradise. He said تقوى الله وحسن خلق the fear of Allah and good character. The thing that causes most people to enter into paradise. It's not your money, it's not your wealth, not how many children you have, not what kabila, not what tribe you come from, not what type of car you drive, not what type of house you live in, not what type of business you run. Taqwa Allah wa husnul khulaq, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good character. Those are the two things that causes most people to enter into paradise. And he was asked, what are the things that cause most people to enter into the hellfire? He said, al-famu wal faraj your tongue and your private car. The thing that causes most people to enter into the hellfire is your tongue and your private part, which is two things that today most people lack control over. As the Prophet وسلم, gave us a guarantee, قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي مَا رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِ فِي صَحِيهِ مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ مَا بَيْنَ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ أَضْمَنْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever can guarantee me the thing that is between his two lips and the thing that is between his two legs, I can guarantee you paradise. If you can guarantee me control over what is between your lips and what is between your legs, I can guarantee you paradise. Why? Because the vast majority of the people that go to the hellfire is either from the tongue or from the private part. So if you can gain control over those two things, then I can guarantee you paradise. Which is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Man manna Allahu alayhi bi imra'atin saliha faqad manna faqad a'anahu ala shakri dinihi ya'ni nisfa dinihi fattaqu Allah fin nisfa al-akhar The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever Allah gives them a righteous wife, then Allah has assisted you with half of your deen, so fear Allah concerning the other half. Meaning, if you can protect your private parts, then that's half of your deen. Half of your deen is done. Fear Allah concerning the other half, meaning the tongue and the eyes and the other parts of the body that gets us in trouble. And it was because the Prophet Sallallahu said this, that some of his companions like Abu Darda, anhu, he gave a very profound statement when he said, Ansif udhunayka min feek, fa innama ju'ilat laka udhunani wa fammun wahid li tasma' akthar mimma tatakallam. Abu Darda anhu, he said, exercise equality between your ears and your tongue because you were given two ears and one tongue so that you can listen more than you talk. You were given two ears and one tongue so that you can listen more than you talk. And Allah, for Allah today, especially with many of our youth, all you hear from them is kalam. All you hear from them is kalam. Talk, 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 talk. And actually talking about nothing. Instead of doing more listening, which is what we should be doing at young ages. قال مخلد بن حسين ما تكلمت منذ خمسين سنة بكلمة أريد أن أعبر من. That مخلد بن حسين, one of the scholars of the past, he said that I never, in a period of fifty years, I never uttered a word out of my mouth that I had to go back and apologize for. Very cautious about the things that come out of your mouth. As some of the scholars say, in the kalima qabla an takhruj tamlikuha wa idha kharajat tamlikuka. That before the word leaves your mouth, you are in control of it. Once it leaves your mouth, it controls you. Meaning you have no control of uh, how your words are going to affect other people and what is going to happen to you as a result of what comes out of your mouth. But before it leaves your mouth, you control the words. Once the words leave your mouth, they control you. And there are many dangers of the tongue, brothers and sisters, that many of us should be, that all of us should be aware of, so that we can safeguard ourselves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah ta'ala, in the duration of the khutbah, we want to mention some of the afat of lisan, some of the dangers of the tongue, some of the things that we need to stay away from so that our tongue doesn't get us in trouble. From the dangers of the tongue, in afat al-ula, al-kalam, fi ma la ya'ni. From the dangers of the tongue, number one is speaking about things that don't concern you. Talking about things that have nothing to do with you. 
قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن الاسلام مرئي تركه ما لا يعني the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned in this hadith that was collected in the sunan of al-timidi he said that from the perfection of one's islam is that he leaves off talking about things that don't concern him قال سهل ابن عبد الله من تكلم فيما لا يعنيه حرم الصدق that one of the scholars of the past by the name of Sahal ibn Abdullah, he said that whoever is in the habit of speaking about things that don't concern him, he will be deprived of truthfulness in his speech. You will be deprived of being sincere and genuine in your speech because you're always talking. You don't know when to distinguish when, when, to distinguish when being silent and when, to be, and, and when to talk. So you're constantly talking about things that don't concern you, which means that you lose out on being genuine in your speech. وقال لقمان وقيل للقمان الحكيم ما بلغ من حكمتك قال لا أسأل عما كفيته ولا أتكلم فيما لا يعني لقمان الحكيم لقمان he was asked your wisdom to what degree did it reach he said, I don't speak about things that don't concern me, and I don't ask about questions that I already have the knowledge of. I don't ask about things that I already have the knowledge about. As today, we go fatwa shopping, or we get a fatwa, or we get some Islamic information about an endeavor, about a particular thing. If it doesn't suit our desires, we'll continue to keep asking until we get the answer that we're looking for. When you already know that it's haram, you already know that it's haram, but we'll continue to keep asking until we get the answer that we're looking for. As some of the salaf they used to say, Man ulama That whoever follows the allowances of the scholars, looking for any loopholes in the speech of the scholars, then he has gathered every type of evil possible in himself. We look for loopholes in the deen so that we can satisfy our desires. Let it mean Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has deserted you. Allah has abandoned you, that you busy yourself with things that don't concern you. Al-Afatul Thaniya, Al-Jidal wal mira From the dangers of the tongue, number two, is argumentation and debating. Arguing and debating about things that we shouldn't be arguing and debating about. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned an authentic hadith collected in Sahih al-Bukhari. Abghadu rijali ila Allahi aladdul khasim that the most hated of individuals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is given to much argumentation and debate. Always debating, always arguing. Some of us live for that. Every morning we wake up, we want to engage in argumentation and debate because we got a point to prove all the time to everybody. Validation, brothers and sisters, is from within, not from without. We get validation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not validation from beating someone in an argument or debate. And arguing and debating excessively, it also puts your deen at risk. As one of the scholars of the past, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Man ja'ala deenahu gharadan li khusumat kana akthara tanakkul. And I'll elaborate on this sometime uh, uh, after this, inshallah ta'ala, because the statement is so profound. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, whoever makes his deen a target for argumentation and debate, we're constantly being transitioning from one thing to the next. Because every time somebody beats you in an argument, then you take their position, and now you want something totally different. Every time you engage someone in an argument, to, uh, in an argument or debate, and they conquer you in the debate, you take their position now, and you transfer or you transition from your previous position. Constantly tanakul, constantly transitioning from one thing to the next. You never find any solidity in the deen because you constantly put your deen up for argumentation and debating. As one of the salaf by the name of Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he was coming out of the masjid and one of the people of innovation said to him, Ta'ala nukhasan, qala amma ana faqad absartu deeni fa'in faqadta deenik fa'altamishu. He said, come, let's debate about the Qur'an. Come, let's debate. Hassan al-Basri, he said to him, he said, as for me, فَقَدْ أَفْصَرَةُ دِينِي He said, as for me, he said, I'm clear about my deen. He said, if you lost your religion, then go find it. I have nothing to debate with you about. I'm clear about my religion. I have nothing to debate with you about. If you lost your religion, then go find it. As for me, I have no reason to debate with you. I'm clear about my religion. 
al afatul thalitha Number three from the dangers of the tongue, al-fuhsh was sabb is to insult people and to use vulgarity, to use profanities, to use vulgar and obscene language, which is not from the behavior of the believer. The Prophet wasallam, he said, Iyakum wal fuhsh. I warn you, I caution you against vulgarity and obscene uh, obscenery. He said, Fa inna Allah la yuhibbul fuhsh wa la tafahush. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like vulgarity and does not like obscene language. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث رواه الترمذي قال ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا لعان ولا فحاش ولا بذيء الكلام. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the believer is not طعان. The believer is not insulting. He doesn't walk around insulting people and disrespecting people. That is not from the qualities of the believer. لا طعان ولا لعان. He doesn't curse people. The believer doesn't curse people. When I use the word curse, I'm not talking about uh, profanity. I'm saying invoking the curse of Allah on another believer. Saying, Allahumma l'anhu, may Allah curse you. That is not from the qualities of the believer. The believer doesn't use obscene language, profanity in the street, the speech of the people of the streets. The believer is reserved and he chooses his words wisely. This is from the qualities and the characteristics of the believer. <laughs> and, this be and this behavior can actually affect your entry into paradise. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, an authentic hadith that was collected by Abu Nu'ayn, Bilhilya, qala al Jannah haramun ala kulli fahish. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Jannah is haram upon every individual who uses obscene and insulting language towards others. Qala Jabir ibn Samura. إن الفحش والتفحش ليس من الإسلام في شيء وإن أحسن الناس إسلاما أحسنهم أخلاقا رواه أحمد. That Jabir ibn Samura, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that in in the the insulting people and using obscene language, this is has no place in Islam. ليس من الإسلام في شيء. It has no place in Islam. He said, but indeed the best of the people in Islam are those who have the best character. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما جاء فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أكل ما تسمعون استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين من كل دم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله العلي الجبار غافر الذنب وقابل التوب الشديد العقاب وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الآفة الرابعة number four from the dangers of the tongue المزاح المزاح أما اليسير منه فلا ينهى عنه وإذا كان إذا كان صدقا number four from the dangers of the tongue is laughing and joking all the time laughing and joking all the time اليسير منه فلا ينهى عنه إذا كان صدقا that laughing and joking sometimes, if it is done, rarely it's done, barely, then there's nothing wrong with it so as long as even though you're joking, you're telling the truth. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تكثروا من الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب رواه تلمذي The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said don't be abundant in laughing too much because too much laughter, it deadens the heart. It causes the heart to die, causes the heart not to take anything serious. You see, the believer, you come around and he's always joking all the time. All the time, you don't take anything serious. إنه لا يدخل الجنة العجوز فبكت العجوز ثم تلا قول الله تعالى إن أنشأناهن إن شاء فجعلناهن أبكارا أربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم one time he was joking and he said in a crowd of people he said old women will not enter into paradise and an old lady old woman elderly woman began to cry بكت بكاء شديدا she began to cry profusely. Why would the Prophet say something like that? He said, old oh, women will not enter paradise. And she started crying. 
Then the Prophet وسلم, recited the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed we will create them a special creation. And we will make them virgins loving only their husbands of equal age for the companions of the right hand. Meaning, when the old women enter into paradise, they will be brought down to the young old age and they will be returned back to being virgins. So even though the Prophet وسلم, was joking, he was still telling the truth. <laughs> Meaning, there will be no old people in paradise. You will be brought down back to a young, youthful age. And some of the scholars differ as it relates to what the specific age is. Nonetheless, you will not enter into paradise as an old, elderly person. And this is from the Fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Abat al-Khamisa. Number five, from the dangers of the tongue, as sukhriya wa al-istighza. Is making mockery of people and belittling people and looking down on people. al sukhriya ihtikar wa al-istighza tanbihunna ala uyub. That number one, the sukhriya is ihtikar nas, to look down on people, to despise people. And the Prophet sallallahu said, That it is sufficient for you to be considered an evil person, that you look down on your brother Muslim. That you look down on your brother Muslim because he doesn't look like you, because he doesn't dress like you, because he doesn't have the same skin complexion as you, but because he's not an Arab, or he's not African American, or he's not Indian, or he's not Pakistani, you looking down on another Muslim is worse of a sin, and it's evil, sufficient for you to be considered evil, that you look down on your brother Muslim. And istighzah is to point out the, the, to point out the physical, um, the physical ailments of your brother or your sister so that people can laugh. To say, look at him, he don't have any hair. To look at him, he, he only has four fingers. To look at him, he's one-legged. Look at him, he walks with a limp. Look at him, he walks goofy. And to make these type of uh, you know, comments about your brother in Islam, this is called istihzah. To highlight the physical ailments of your brother so that people can laugh. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَا تُظْهِرُ الشَّمَاتَةَ لِأَخِيكَ فَيَرَحَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَيَبْتَلِيكَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that was collected in the sunnah of Al-Tirmini, do not show happiness at the downfall of your brother, for indeed Allah may have mercy upon him and test you with what you're laughing at. Test you with the same thing you're laughing at with your brother, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with it. As a matter of fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in another hadith, مَنْ أَيَّرَ أَخَاهُ بِذَنْبٍ لَنْ يَمُوتَ حَتَّى يَعْمَلَهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever finds fault with a particular character of his brother, then he himself will not die until he does the same exact thing. The same thing you make mockery of other people with, then you will find yourself doing the same exact thing. Oh, this person, she doesn't wear overgarment, she doesn't wear keymar, and you will not die until you fall, find yourself falling into the same thing. When we see our brothers and sisters struggling with something in the religion, then we should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has not tested us with what he tested them with, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafani mimma bitalahu bihi wa fadalani ala kathira min man khalaqa tafdila. And all praise is due to Allah who has saved me from what he has tested him with and has favored me over much of his creation. Alhamdulillah. Not to find fault with your brother. al to sadisa Number six from the dangers of the tongue. Ifsha al-sir. To spread people's secrets. To spreading people's secrets. Qala Umar radiallahu ta'anhu. Ida takallama ar-rajul akhahu. Thumma tawalla anhu fa huwa amana wa in lam yastak minhu. Umar radiallahu ta'anhu. He said that if you are having a conversation with your brother and then you turn around and walk away from the conversation, then that conversation is an amana. It is a trust. Even if he didn't say to you, don't tell anybody. Even if I don't say anything, to, even if I don't say to you, don't tell anybody, it's in a manner. The conversation that we had in private, it is in a manner, it is a trust. And today, with the social media outlets, there is no a manner today. You have a conversation with a brother, this even goes on between husband and wife. Husband have an argument with a wife, off she goes to Facebook, off she goes to Twitter, and put on Facebook and Twitter, you know, people need to check themselves, people need to do this, and she's talking about her own husband. Or vice versa, he's talking about his own wife. People need to fear Allah. And you're referring to your own spouse when we spread it to other people. Guess who I was talking to earlier? And guess what he said? X, Y, Z. And that was a private conversation between you and another brother. Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he said that if you have a conversation with your brother and he turns around and walks away from the conversation, for who aman, then it is a trust. Even if he doesn't say to you, don't tell anybody. That's not a condition. It's not a shout that I tell you, don't tell anybody. 
And subhanAllah, even sometimes when we say to one another, don't tell anybody, this is between me and you. Baini wa baini. And lo and behold, the rest of the world finds out. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the worst type of secret that you could spread is the secret that goes on between husband and wife. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned an authentic hadith collected in Sahih Muslim. Inna min ashar al nas manzilatan inda Allah yawm al qiyamah al rajulu yufdi ila mara'atihi wa tufdi ilayhi thumma yanshuru sirra'a. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the worst people in the sta in, in station or the worst people in the sight of Allah on the day of judgment is a man who is intimate with his wife and a wife who's intimate with her husband and then they go and they spread each other's secrets to everybody else. And this is one of the signs of a hypocrite, brothers and sisters, to spread people's secrets. This is a sign of the hypocrite. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Araba man kana man kana fihi that there are four qualities that whoever possesses all four he is a complete hypocrite and this is hypocrisy in your actions not hypocrisy in your belief as there's two types of hypocrisy there's the hypocrisy of the munafiqun that Allah mentions in the Quran and that is the munafiqun of belief hypocrisy al nifaq al i'tiqadi that is a that is hypocrisy in your belief meaning that you outwardly you display that you believe but inwardly you don't believe and the hypocrites in reality are kuffar, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ They're not believers. They are those who say they believe in Allah on the last day, but they are not believers. And then there's the, there's the nifaq, al-amali. There's the hypocrisy in your actions. And that is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about here. Whoever possesses four qualities, then he is a complete hypocrite. And whoever possesses one or two or three of those qualities, then he has qualities of nifaq, of hypocrisy, until he leaves them off. And one of the qualities, either haddatha that when he speaks, he lies. Every word comes out of his mouth is a lie. Either haddatha he lies. When he speaks, he lies. Well, either tumina khan, when he's entrusted with something, he proves untrustworthy. And that is the point of reference here. Have a moldy shadi. That when he speaks, he lies. That when he promises, then he doesn't fulfill his promise. I'll be there at 10, you never show up, you never call, you never, nothing. I'll do it at this time, you never show up. You promise, but then you don't fulfill your promise. And when he, argue, and when he, when he argues, he becomes belligerent and disrespectful. And so these are six from the dangers of the tongue, brothers and sisters. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll have some time at another particular time to deal with the other four of Ibn Allah ta'ala. Uh, I want to remind the brothers and sisters, uh, inshallah ta'ala, tonight there will be a lecture between Maghrib and Isha. Salatul Maghrib comes in at 7 o'clock p.m., 7.10 p.m. And after Salatul Maghrib, there will be a lecture between Ibn Allah ta'ala. Uh, also want to remind the brothers and sisters that the five daily prayers are established here in the masjid. And we encourage the brothers, inshallah ta'ala, to come out and to perform the masjid, to perform the salat in the masjid. There's an obligation on the Muslim men to establish salat in the masjid. Please keep the masjids alive, inshallah ta'ala. Ihya baytullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسأل إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحسي ثناء عليك ولو حرسنا أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين وعقيم الصلاة